Hello, good evening and welcome. My name is Intan Shazrina and I'm from Section 11, Network Communications SECR 123. In this video, I'll be explaining about Wireshark and HTTP protocol. I will also demo and explain different aspects of HTTP such as the basic HTTP GET or response interaction, the HTTP conditional GET or response interaction, retrieving long documents, HTML documents with embedded objects, and also HTTP authentication. So for the first part, the basic HTTP GET or response interaction. So first of all, you click on your, you open your browser, and then you open your Wireshark packet sniffer. So here is your Wireshark packet sniffer, and then you click here in this display filter specification window, you type in HTTP, enter. This is so that only captured HTTP message is displayed in the packet listing window. So after that, then you start packet capturing. You click on Wi-Fi and then you click here. Now, copy this link and then paste it, paste to your URL. And then you got this simple one, one line HTML file. And then you go back to your Wireshark, stop capturing. The questions for the first part are here. Okay, so the question, the first question is, is your browser running HTTP version 1.0 or 1.1? and also what version of HTTP is the server running. So, click on the first line and then you can see the browser is running HTTP version 1.1 here. And then if you want to see what server, what HTTP version does the server run, click on the second line and then we'll see that the server is running HTTP version 1.1 also. Or we can see from here. This is the browser HTTP version and this is the server HTTP version. Second question, what languages, if any, does your browser indicate that it can accept to the server? Languages. Click on the first line and then skim in the packet content window for accept language. So, the accepted language here is English, United States. Third question, what is the IP address of your computer and of the server? So, we can get the IP addresses here in the packet listing, source and destination. Choose one line, such as the get line. And then the source, the source is the computer's IP address. And then the destination is the server's IP address. Question number four. What is the status code written from the server to your browser? So we want the respond line. So the respond line is in the second line. Second line, status code. Status code, we can find here. The status code written is 200, which indicates OK. When was the HTML file that you are retrieving last modified at the server? So we skim again, find last modified. Here, Wednesday, 9 December 2020, 6.31 GMT. How many bytes of content are being returned to your browser? So, you, so we want to know how many bytes of content. So we find content length. So here it is. Uh, the content length is 128 bytes. By inspecting the raw data in the packet content window, do you see any headers within the data that are not displayed in the packet listing window? If so, name one. As we can see here, there is no headers within here that are not displayed in the packet listing window. So the answer for question 7 is no header. For the second part, the HTTP conditional get or response interaction. 
so for this part the first step is open your browser and then you open your Wireshark packet sniffer and then you start packet capturing click on Wi-Fi start packet capturing copy this link and then paste it paste the URL and then you'll see this one two three four five line of HTML file quickly refresh stop Wireshark go back to Wireshark and stop there you have it so the questions for the second part question number eight inspect the contents of the first HTTP get request from your browser to the server do you see an if modified sense okay first of all click on display filter specification enter HTTP and then we click on the first HTTP get request under HTTP uh, do you see an if modified since so there is an if modified since here okay question number nine inspect the contents of the server response which did, which is the second line did the server explicitly return the contents of the file how can you tell so click on the second line and as we can see here that there is a, there is the content so this is how we tell the line based text data text html here so question number 10 now inspect the contents of the second http get request from your browser to the server do you see an if modified since okay we click on the second http get request and as we can see there is no if modified since so we can find the information follows question 11 what is the http status code and phrase returned from the server in response to the second http get did the server explicitly return the contents of the file explain so we have to find the response to this second http get request so here is the response okay from this response we can see the line based based text data with the contents so the server did explicitly return the contents of the file the third part retrieving long documents do the same thing open your browser and then you open your Wireshark packet sniffer and then you start click on wi-fi start packet capturing click here copy link and then you paste url in the browse in your browser enter and then you sh uh, your browser should display a rather lengthy us bill of rights so this is the bill of rights as you can see here it is very long and then you go back to your y shot stop i can get you for the questions in part 3 Question 12. How many HTTP GET request messages did your browser send? Which packet number in the trace contains the GET message for the bill or writes? So, how many HTTP GET request messages? As you can see here, 1, 2, 3. 3 HTTP GET request messages. Which packet number in the trace contains the GET message for the bill or writes? So click on the first get, the packet number is 12, the second get, the packet number is 22, the third get, the packet number is 69. Or we can see here, 12, 22, 69. Question 13. Which packet number in the trace contains the status code and phrase associated with the response to the HTTP get request? So, the packet number for the uh, respond line so the respond the first respond line here packet number is 20 second respond line here uh, packet number is 32 third respond line here packet number is 81 or you can just see here 20 32 and 81 question 14 what is the status code and phrase in the response okay let's just read from here so the status code and phrase from the response uh, for the first response is 304 status code 
and the phrase is not modified. For the second response, the status code is 404 and the phrase is not found. Uh, and the status code from the sec from the third response is 200 and the phrase is okay. Question 15. How many data containing TCP segments were needed to carry the single HTTP response and the text of the bill or bill of rights? As we can see here, there is four TCP segments that can be found here. Click here. This is the TCP segments needed to carry this, this single HTTP response. The fourth part, HTML documents with embedded objects. So as usual, open your browser, make sure you cleared your cache and then open your Wireshark packet sniffer. So start packet capturing, click on Wi-Fi and start and then copy this link and paste it into your browser. Okay, your browser should display a short HTML file with two images. So this is the short HTML file and these are the two images. And then stop Wireshark packet capturing. Go back to your Wireshark and stop packet capturing. Now, questions for the fourth part. Question 16. How many HTTP GET request messages did your browser send? To which internet addresses were these GET requests sent? Okay, so here in the display filter specification, enter HTTP. Now, we can see that there is one, two, three, three GET request messages. Okay, which internet addresses were these GET requests sent? So, from these three lines, we look at the destination. All three of them have the same destination, which is in the IP address of 128.119.245.12. Okay, moving on. Question 17. Can you tell whether your browser downloaded the two images serially or whether they were downloaded from the two websites in parallel? Explain. So as we can see, this is uh, this one. This one is the get request for the first image, and this one is the second get request for the second image. As we can see, it is in serial. Serially, the images were downloaded serially because look at the time, the get request time for the both of the image. Is different and the second get requests were sent after the first image were received so we can say that uh, the request and response are done serially uh, the first get go out and then they receive and then the second go get go out and then the second receive so it is serially okay in the fifth part HTTP authentication so do all the same steps open your browser make sure you clear your cache and then open your Wireshark packet sniffer start your Wireshark packet sniffer click on Wi-Fi and start copy the link and paste it in your browser Okay, it shows this pop-up box. Okay, and then uh, type in requested username and password into the pop-up box. So the username right now is Wireshark Student. So write Wireshark Student without the quotes and the password is network. So either you copy or you type depend on you and click on sign in this page is password protected if you're seeing this you've downloaded the page correctly congratulations now go back to your Wireshark and stop packet capturing then okay questions for the fifth part Question 18. What is the server's response? 
status could increase in response to the initial HTTP GET message from your browser. So we find HTTP. Now, the service response for the first HTTP GET. So this is the first HTTP GET. This is the response. Click on the response and then find status code and phrase. So the status code is 401 and the phrase is unauthorized. Okay, question 19. When your browser sends the HTTP GET message for the second time, what new field is included in the HTTP GET message? New field. So we have to find the new field in the second HTTP GET. So we have to do a comparison. This is the first HTTP GET request. So as we can see here, this is the packet content. And then we click on the second. This is the packet content. So the new field would be authorization here. So the last section from the fifth part, we are going to talk about this authorization header. So as we can see, there's this one long line of string, which is the encrypted uh, username and password. So if you want to see this, you copy this link, paste it in your browser, and we'll get to here. Now, copy this encrypted string paste it here change to decode click convert the source data now we'll see the decrypted version of the string that's all for this video as for closing and reflection i can say that from this lab exercise of a shark I learned so many things including the basic and conditional get response interaction, HTTP message formats, retrieving large HTML files, retrieving HTML files with embedded objects, HTTP authentication and security. So from these various aspects of HTML protocol, I am now able to identify, differentiate and determine detailed elements of network in the Wireshark application such as IP addresses, status code and phrase, packet number and length, packet number and length, headers, request and response messages, and also not to forget the CP segments carrying HTTP response. Also, I learned that different HTML structure produces different packet content. Okay, so in this case, in this case, of course, HTTP protocol. And don't forget, it is advisable that you clear your web browser's cache before you execute any of this exercise. That's all. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.